We kick off the show with something quite serious, something that we've been talking about for weeks and weeks, and that is uh, the Gilbert goons. And uh, we know that kids in Gilbert have been attacked brutally um, by these thugs. Brass knuckles have been used. Um, and, you know, we've been all over the mayor, all over the police chief. Um, and and I think, you know, Chad, one of the things that, that we want to do here is, is tell the stories. And we have um, a mom and we have a son in here to tell their story. Uh, and I want to wish them uh, uh, well here because we're going to have a conversation over the next hour. So let me introduce them. Uh, Connor is a 17. He joins us. And mom, Stephanie, um, joins us as well. I want to uh, uh, welcome you both to the show. How are you today? Good. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Great. Thanks for having us. So Connor was attacked at an in and out and we have heard this over and over again. So I just want to say it's very brave of you both to come in studio, uh, sit here and, and answer questions from, you know, two of us. Um, and we just want to walk through because, um, Connor, something you're going to do, uh, you're trying to do, we're going to talk about in a little while, is get ba Brass Knuckles banned in Arizona. Bravo, my friend. Uh, we're going to talk about that. Um, so the date that, that you were attacked with Brass Knuckles, December 30th, 2022 you were at an in and out tell us what happened so i was at an in and out and about 10 or 11 guys approached us and they're at first they're like nice car cool car and they complimented me on my jacket i was with my other friend mm. and then they were like give me 20 dollars." so obviously I, I said no you're not getting 20 dollars from me and then one of his friends mentioned that my keys were in the car and so the main guy that was talking to me goes to try to get in my car and I step in front of him to take the keys mm. and when I turn around to grab the keys um, I get punched in the back of the head with brass knuckles Ugh. and so I turn around to confront the guy and I feel blood just gushing down my back and so I give him $20 they go to their cars and me and my friend drive off and call the police and the fire department Gosh. So you knew none of these kids, right? These weren't kids you went to school with. None of the they were just random kids at In and Out. Yeah, we had no idea who they were. It was about seven o'clock at dinner time on a Thursday, and like we had no idea who they were. All right, Stephanie and Connor Jarnigan are joining us uh, in studio. Connor was attacked, brass knuckles, back of the head, December thirtieth, twenty twenty two. I know this is is a strange question, but I think. If you want to get Brass Knuckles banned in Arizona, tell me this. What does that feel like? Because I can't even imagine. Um, I had no idea this was coming. I never saw it in the future until we could, until I took my situation and looked for something brighter. So it kind of makes me feel good that we can do something out of a bad situation and make our community safer. Heck yeah. What does it feel like to get hit with Brass Knuckles? Physically, what does it feel like? Um, it hurts at first, but at the time I had a lot of adrenaline, so I didn't feel it much. But when I got the staples in the back of my head, those hurt a lot. How many staples did you get? I had two staples in the back of my head. So, out of nowhere, dude punches you, give him 20 bucks, you hop in your car, probably shouldn't have been driving, a concussion I would assume, yeah. uh, but to get out of there... And you, I mean, this is 2022, so you were kind of the, the, the first of what was going to be several attacks throughout the next year or so. Yeah, I've, uh, after that, I did a little kind of investigating, talking to friends, and I've heard like a couple other people gotten hit by them, and I didn't know much about it, but after that, it kind of started escalating, and I've heard about more and more attacks. Uh, Stephanie and Connor are joining us. Connor is now 17. He was attacked at 16. Okay, Stephanie, mom, um, your son comes home and he is bleeding profusely. Like, what are you, what are you thinking right there? Well, the first thing that happened, um, my husband and I were in different places. I was folding laundry. Vividly remember getting a call from him saying, "Connor's been hit. He, he's gonna, he's gonna be okay. I'm gonna take care of it." My husband was um, grocery shopping, so he just abandons his cart of cart of food. And I, it was just unbelievable. Never in my wildest dreams would I thought that going, allowing my son to go to in and out yeah. to meet friends, um, to hang out w would be a problem. So you go to the hospital, two staples. You got, you, we've seen some of, we're going to put some of the pictures up. Chad and I looked at it. It's, it's bloody. It is, 
That were, that were was injured. a cleaned up picture. The, the one that the blood on his neck that was after the EMT treated and cleaned him up. I mean, how big was that cut? Uh, it was probably about half an inch. Yeah, mm. wide. Yeah, it was deep though. Yeah, it was, it was deep. deep, and that's what the staples. Uh, so have you know? I mean, you go through this real quick. I mean, obviously you're gonna. Ha- you must be walking around the next couple of days going, what What the hell just happened to me? Like, you know, what, 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 I was at in and out Burger, for God's sakes, and I just got attacked. It, for no it, reason. For no reason. It, it, do I need to worry about this at school? Am I, I mean, it, you had to think something like that. Yeah. Um, me and my dad talked about kind of like being safe or like in public and even changing cars for a while. I had to drive a truck that my grandpa gave me. And so I just had to be cautious in public, and I still do because I don't know their intentions and what they want to do to me. So you're still looking over your shoulder? Yeah, I am to this day. Mom just put her head down. Yeah. Oh, gosh, that is awful to hear that. I just saw your reaction that, yeah, I mean, he's still looking over his shoulder. And as a mom, that's just got to, it's the worst thing. It's It definitely is hard. And I, I just don't know what's going through these kids' head to make them think that that kind of a behavior is acceptable or or even the parents who are the parents to these boys like do they know that their sons are doing this it's it's unbelievable to do me. you feel your son is safe it's uh the the he connor is in studio with us with his mom stephanie and the attack was uh december 30th 2022 so it's been over a little over a year uh, do you feel like he's safe or do you how do you feel I feel like we've done the best that we can to to help equip him. Like, what measures have you taken then? Well, other than you switch the car, so now they don't know what the what, what type of car it is, right? Yeah. Because they already saw your car and and said it was a nice car, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, being here today, I've told you I don't want you to put his face on the media. Right. Um, Which we've made made, made sure that we did. Yep. Or tell people where he goes to high school. Correct. Um. We're pro Second Amendment family, so we go through gun safety training and shoot. It's not like he carries, obviously, he's young, but right. down the road, that might be something he looks into. I, we don't want to live a life of fear, though. Like, I've, I've been afraid for t- too long, so that's why I kind of agreed to come on and talk to you guys. Are you worried about retaliation? You're worried that there, there are kids looking for you based on the fact that... Uh, uh there was a trial, and we'll get to that in a little bit, that one of them went down, so maybe there's revenge, or, or do you think hopefully this thing's behind you? Um, I have I have no idea, and that's kind of what scares me. In the courtroom, he did say he forgave me, but um, I know he's done a lot worse. He, 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 wait a second. He forgave you, huh? <laughs> All right, I, uh, I forgave him, and he said he's really sorry. Yeah. Um, it was the but, other way around. Yeah. I'm kind of scared, like, in public, like – Say I take my car out one night and they see my car, like, I don't know if they're going to follow me and try to get revenge for right. putting him up. Do they pay a visit to you? Anybody come over? Because we've heard that you know, by a few parents that, you know, that they kind of wandered by the house, some of these kids and stuff. There was a period where we thought that was happening, um, but it turned out to be neighborhood kids that were just fooling around. Because at that point, you're so vigilant. Oh, yeah. You're super vigilant. Hyper aware. Right. Yeah, we got an alarm system installed in our house and um, lots of safety measures, obviously. All right. Uh, Stephanie and Connor are in studio with us. Uh, Stephanie's son, Connor, was attacked December 30th, 2022. Um, so let's, let's go down this road uh, just a bit. So when you were attacked, and from what I understand, the, the kid that attacked you... He attacked somebody two weeks prior. Mm-hmm. So this kid went out and hit a, a couple of different kids, you included. Yeah. Okay. And then he got arrested. He did, yes. Okay. So did you get, you, you said you got to face him in court? You got to see who he is? You- I, yeah. Um, I went to court and I gave, a, I gave a speech about how I forgave him and kind of what measurements I think the sh- court should take to uh, help him. Why did you forgive him? Um, I forgave him because uh, I'm a Christian. I believe in forgiveness, and I believe that without forgiveness, I would have no hope. And so I'm going to forgive him because of what Jesus did for me. Your mom's crying now because that 
my, solid answer right it's there. It's a great answer. It's a great answer. What do you think of your son's answer right there? I mean, uh, he's he's 17. He's acting like he's 34. He's an, he's, he's acting a, older than I ever <laughs> can be. Yeah, I, I'm super proud of him. He's very confident in his faith. Yeah. And that what he gave was called a victim impact statement. So we both had the opportunity to give victim impact statements and just share what was on our heart and how it made us feel and and what um, punishments we thought should should be um, given to the attacker. What what punishment has been given to the attacker? So he was arrested maybe about three weeks after the incident with Connor, and he was held in juvenile detention through the whole court process. And I think it was so from mid-January to about end of April, he was in juvenile detention, and then um, he they transferred him to a behavioral health facility, yeah. where I think he sp- spent about five months there. Um, so most most of his 2023. Was, he was he was in juvie or in in some sort of uh, facility. Facility is he the, out or still in? Um, he got out beginning of October, but then he had two months on an ankle monitor and then probation. So he's is, still in probation. Does that satisfy you? Does that satisfactory that punishment? I think so. I I just have to like I would drive myself crazy if I didn't believe that that he learned something from yeah. this do you feel that he was sincere in his apology um uh i have no idea to be honest but i think him going through all of what is what he did and his punishments i think that has to take some sort of toll on him and he has to reflect on his actions mom here's a quick question for you uh were his parents there was his parents there yes his parents did attend every single hearing so and the mom was devastated and cried um at times so the dad didn't speak a lot um but they did attend so connor was a hit december 30th of 2022 so a lot of talk that that chad and i have had is that the gilbert police chief has been non-existent and a lot of the stuff from gilbert has got gotten through the cracks you feel like they've done a good job in your case I think our case is a little different because we, I think we might be the only ones who were able to prosecute the attacker who was responsible for hitting Connor in the back of the head with brass knuckles. So we, our experience with Gilbert police was different. Um, we were able, to, there were some upstander teens who turned over evidence because as Connor said, he didn't know who the teens were right. and they, but these teens turned over evidence of bragging on social media and that was what led the police to be able to make a solid case and then eventually press charges when uh you went to court one of the things that that i was reading about is i don't think you were really thrilled about some of the way the court system was it just felt like it is set up in a way where the victims have to relive everything and it just yeah, there's some issues there, I think, that need to be addressed. Yeah, and it was a juvenile court system, which is a whole nother level. The acronyms they use, it's a really confusing process. You are assigned a, I think it's a victim advocate, which you can ask questions to, but it was just kind of mind-boggling, the mm. whole process. And then that case that you talked about that happened two weeks before, Connor. Yes, the that, same guy yeah. two weeks before hit somebody with brass knuckles and then two weeks later hit connor right yeah so that case they didn't figure that one out until after connor's case and then it just seemed like it was lumped in with ours okay and and it's not like and i might be wrong yeah they weren't separate um i don't feel like he got any extra charges for that one i think they just stuck with the same charges and he did plea it's not called the same thing that it is like a plea agreement but whatever the equivalent is in juvenile court he he admitted guilt and so he got a lesser punishment they dropped one of the felonies connor this might be a weird question and if it is i i I ask all types of weird questions but i'm he does he does connor i'm gonna let you know that (laughs) so you get hit with the brass knuckles in the back of the head like what does that do to, what does that do to you does it does it make you grow up faster does it make you more aware of your surroundings does it make you tougher I, I don't know I was wondering what you thought 
I think it um it gave me like a uh, introduction to the world and like how there's evil out there, but also it helped me um it kind of gave me motivation to go out in the world and do things to make it better and instead of kind of just sitting back and watching these things happen to people. Like trying to get brass knuckles banned and asking for legislation. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. You're an impressive man, I'll tell you. You really are. Um, you know, if I was 16, Chad, if I was 16 and I got hit like that, I don't know what I would have done. I don't know if I would I don't know done. what you do if now you get hit I don't like think that. I know, know now. I no, really don't. No. And I think that you've shown, like, you know. Maturity. A, a of level maturity. of maturity. It, it pops something into you that yeah. says, I got to go do something here. Uh, I got to learn from this, this and I can I can do something with it. So here's what we're going to do. You want legislation uh, to ban brass knuckles in Arizona. You don't want anyone else to get hit with these things. You know how much it hurts. You know what kind of damage it does. And so uh, we're going to pause here. But when we come back after Becky Lynn's news, uh, we're going to bring a lawmaker on with you. And, you know, I'm just going to be honest. Chad and I will probably step on his neck a little bit to try and get some of this stuff done because we'd like to see him banned. We'd like to see the brass knuckles banned. Um, but John Cavanaugh is an Arizona state senator who says he'd look at this. He'd uh, he'd look at trying to get what you want done, Connor. And so um, you're going to have a chance to talk to him. And you know what? I'll just say it. you're going to have to. You can sell him, sell him on why this has to happen, um, because I don't think there's any single person that can do it better than you. We're going to continue along talking about uh, the Gilbert Goons in studio. Uh, Connor was 16 when he was attacked with brass knuckles back of the head by the Gilbert Goons on December 30th, 2022. Now, Mom is along with him. Stephanie is here. And, Connor, one of the things that you mentioned with us is um, you want lawmakers to ban uh, the use of brass knuckles. You don't want – tell us why. Right. Um, I want them to ban brass knuckles because ultimately I don't think that there's really a value in our communities. And I think without them, uh, there would be less attacks like this yeah. and less uh, harmful attacks because um, the ER doctor actually said that if I was hit an inch to the left of where I was hit, I could have been paralyzed or killed. Gosh. An inch to the left. All right, let's see what we can do uh, trying to get these uh, brass knuckles uh, banned in Arizona. Joining us now is John Cavanaugh. He's an Arizona state senator. Uh, state senator, how are you today? Fine, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Hey, thanks for, for coming on. So we understand that you're kind of working on some legislation here, possibly to ban uh, brass knuckles. Colin, excuse me, Connor is, is, is calling basically on Arizona lawmakers to do so. Uh what kind of legislation are you looking at? Give us yeah. an update here. Sure. Well, actually, I was first alerted to this by Channel 12 News, who explained it to me, right. uh, I think, early Friday. And I told them that I could do a bill. Uh, and then I just saw an email today that came in Friday night after I had left from uh, – from from Stephanie uh, Connor's mother uh, asking the same thing, and yeah, that that that, that process is actually in the works. Uh, I was a uh, police officer for 20 years in New York, and uh, in New York, brass knuckles are considered deadly weapons, which means that just possessing them is is uh, against the law. And I was kind of shocked to discover that they they were legal in Arizona. It's really strange. Uh, so I'm going to introduce a bill that would make, and you have to be a little bit broader, uh, not just brass knuckles, but uh, any metal knuckles, any plastic knuckles, or any knuckles made of a hard, durable material. Because these also come in, in plastic form or in bone form, and all of them are equally uh, destructive. Connor, you liking what you're hearing so far? I love it. Yeah, I'd love to see it get passed. Yeah. What do you need from Connor? Uh, well, certainly coming down and testifying, first-person testimony, especially from somebody who's been victimized, uh, is always very powerful. Can you do that? I would love to do that. Mom, no. is that okay? Absolutely. Hey, okay. Senator, so how's, how's the process work, Senator? From the time that you go and introduce it, Connor comes down, how long is this, you know, what's the process? Explain it to the family and everybody else out there. Sure. Uh, you know, and, and we don't think there's a big lobby for uh, the brass knuckle industry, so I'm, I'm assuming both the right and the left kind of agree that this is ridiculous. 
Yeah, I would hope so. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I've been, I'm in my 18th year. I've had an A plus NRA rating all of those years. And I support, you know, stand your ground, castle doctrine, ca- constitutional carry of handguns. Uh, so my, my uh, Second Amendment, uh, you know, uh, status is not, you know, challengeable. Uh, these are not brass knuckles or any kind of knuckles uh, are not weapons of self-defense. A self-defense weapon is something that you can use where you don't have to get on top of the person and risk being injured. So we're talking about handguns if you're threatened with deadly force. We're talking about maybe uh, a taser or a chemical spray where you can stay back a little bit and, and not get hurt. Uh, a brass knuckle, you have to literally get into contact with the person. So it's not a defensive weapon. It's an offensive weapon that thugs use. So I don't think there'll be any opposition to it well uh, the process of passing a bill is is long and torturous uh, and that's you know t- to err on the side of not passing bad laws but uh basically i'll introduce it into the senate it'll get assigned to one or more committees it has to pass out of the committees with a recommendation to the full senate to pass it it goes to the what we call the Committee of the Whole, which is everybody in committee, so people can amend it if they want to. If it passes out of there, it goes to third read in the Senate, where each member goes on record yes or no. If it passes, it goes to the House, where it will go to the Speaker, be assigned to committees, have to pass out of committees, go to the House Committee of the Whole, and then to the House for a third read. If it passes out of the House on third read in the same form, it goes right to the governor for hopefully hopefully a signature. If they make any kind of an amendment, then we have to have two small groups of people from both chambers to agree on a compromise and then go back with the compromise on vote on both of them and then go back to to the governor for signature. Just like schoolhouse rocks. Connor should be taking notes here. (laughs) Um, We have 30 seconds. Uh, Stephanie, Connor, anything you want to say to the state senator? Um, just that uh, we've been looking into it, and we figured out that uh, 38 states have them banned or restricted, so, and sure. 12 have them unrestricted, and it'd be amazing to see what you can do to help ban yeah. brass knuckles. Well, yeah. I will do my best. And by the way, it's bad for decent people to use these for self-defense because they cause serious injury. And if somebody's being threatened with less than deadly force and they hit somebody with these and cause serious injury, they would be guilty of assaulting the person because it's excessive force. It's so nobody should use these. Uh, they, they're just bad all around. State Senator Kavanaugh, thanks for joining us. Good luck. We're going to be talking to you down the line, okay? Thank you. I will. All right. there. Uh I like what I heard. I think you guys probably liked what you heard. Uh, it's a lot to get through because that's how this all, all this, the bill becomes a law and all that kind of stuff. You also have um, uh, uh, s- said to the attacker, I forgive you. Yes. Boy, those are two God things if you ask me, man. I think it's a reason you got hit right where you got hit. And, you know, you went and, and you... And you, you you said, hey, listen, I forgive you. Is that because of your Christian upbringing? That is, yeah. And I think the only thing we can do about this is try to look at the good things that come out of it and just forgive him because you just forgave us and try to bring good things out of bad. Yeah. Mom, um, Preston Lord, uh, I think we all get choked up when we hear his name, when we talk about him. Uh, he was killed by the Gilbert goons. No one has been arrested in that case yet. And as a mom, you are hearing this, you are watching this. I mean, what what are you thinking? This poor child um, lost his life. And his family. Um, I think it was October 30th when he passed away a couple days after the party. And I can say that there hasn't been a day that's passed that I haven't thought about him or his family. And how his mom in particular must feel. Um, and how close Connor could have come to being a Preston it's just it's it's heartbreaking have you spoken to the family um i met preston's stepmom and father briefly at a chandler city council meeting where i spoke um but i haven't spent great amounts of time it's just it's hard for me um but they absolutely have my support and the only reason that we're here today and willing to talk to you is really to help him if there's anything that we can do to to help his case um we're here for that is, is there anything you can do to help his case i don't know i don't know well um we, we've already kind of shared what our experience was I, I did send a tip into queen creek pd okay we don't know like he was my son wasn't at that party 
um, we can speak to what, what our experience was. Right. Have you talked to any other victims of, of, of some of the stuff that's gone on? No, I listened to Rick Keener's um, conversation with you guys, actually. And obviously, I've been following it a great deal in the media. Connor, I've kind of kept away from it. He, he, he doesn't need to see all this stuff. Yeah. Um, so I have great sympathy for Rick's situation. I mean, sending his son overseas, I, I just, it's unfathomable. And It's the only way you can keep him safe. You had to send him overseas with his mom. Yeah. Connor, is your life back to normal? Um, I don't think so. I think uh, I go out um, when I do go out, which is very rarely now. Um, I kind of keep, I kind of keep looking over my shoulder, and uh, I think now that this happened, I have to be aware, and I have to um, always kind of have that burden on me to uh, look over my shoulder and wonder if it might happen again, and that kind of hurts. If you could say one thing to the audience right now, what would it be? Um. I would say that uh, no matter what happens to you, um, try to forgive and try to come up with good when bad things happen and try to see the bright side because even in the worst of situations, I can tell you that there's always something good that can come from it. You're about the most impressive young man I've really talked to on this show in maybe 25 years. I've been here a long time. Mom, you raised a good one here. My gosh. He is. Um, you You really are. You deserve a lot of credit. Um, you know, we wish you well. We, we hope you get back to normal, or whatever whatever that looks like. But, my friend, you are an impressive young man. You're going places in this world. And, uh, you know, thanks for coming in and, and, and telling us telling you, us your story. It's just tough. Yeah, thanks for having us. I'm yeah. hope, hopefully it can help in the future, and hopefully mm. good will come from it. All right. Stephanie, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. And uh, we're going to stay on Senator, uh, State Senator John Kavanaugh because I think he's going to help you guys ban um, brass knuckles in the state of Arizona. Let's get that done. How about that? Thanks for watching Gatos and Chad. Click to watch more and tap the button in the middle to subscribe to KTAR News.